So here we are on stage four of our deepest, darkest dungeon, um, where we learn to do object oriented programming in Python by going through and creating a text-based adventure game. So um, stage four, we're gonna do two things. We're going to change our characters. At the moment we have the object characters, and we're gonna make two different types of characters. We're gonna have friends and foes. And therefore, we're going to change the interactions with those characters according to where they're friends and foes. So this is introducing a new concept. And that concept is inheritance. So the whole idea that a class can actually um, have different types of subclasses and those subclasses can inherit values from the parent class. So you have a parent class and a child class. So let's have a look what we actually need to do for this, pro for this um, stage. So there's a couple of things. First off, you'll see uh, we're going to define our child classes and they're going to be our friend class and our enemy class. We're going to change the character type to adjust for that and we're going to adjust the fight command. So you can see over here now with our UML, um, we have the character class that we had before, exactly the same, but now there's two different types of classes and little subclasses or child classes. One is the enemy and one is friend. Now what this means is that Enemy and friend will inherit all the character, all the um, all the properties of our character class. So they'll use, they'll have name, they'll have description, they'll have conversation. They'll also inherit all the methods. So the method here of describe, um, talk, hug, and fight, and it's the same here. Is that actually will just be inherited from the actual character one. Um, so, and then hug's going to be inherited because we've got what we're going to do. We've written the fight one for enemy and the hug one for friend because the friends are going to react positively to a hug and the enemies are going to engage in a fight. And these are going to overwrite the parent values. So you've got a method for hug for the character. If that character is a friend, then you're going to use this method instead. So let's see, we'll go through. We're defining the classes, we're going to change the character to us, and then we're going to adjust the actual fight. So let's go back to our Thony file here. And most of the stuff to start off with is going to happen in our character class. So what's it wanted to do? We want to um, define the child classes. So let's go here into character. And I'm coming down and I'm, I'm going to now, instead of being class character, I'm going to make a new class. And that's going to be class friend. And I'm going to say I'm going to say that this is a child class, and I'm going to identify the parent class by putting the parent class up in here. So saying this this class friend is a child of the character class, so it's a subclass of the character class. I now need to actually do my initial init or my initialization method at the beginning, and again it's going to be self, and you need to pass in name when you create a friend. Um, class, but then what you need to do is you need to initialize. Um, so I initialize the friend object, and um, we're going to do that by actually calling the initialization function of the parent um, of the parents um, class. So. I go by so I call the character initialize. So what I'm actually going to run here is I'm going to say super, which refers back to the class in here. So super dot, and then run supers um, initialization function and pass the value of name into that. So what this is going to do, we come up here, I'll create a friend. So um, who's going to be our friend? Our friend is going to, who was our friend character? Our friend character is Nigel. So Nigel, I'm going to create Nigel as a friend. Nigel will come in here and he'll accept Nigel as his name, right? It, it will then run the, because Nigel's a friend and friend is a subcategory or a child of character. He'll go up to the super, which is character, and it will run this in it and it will pass Nigel in here. And then Nigel as a friend will have a name and a description and a conversation. 
right? So that information, all those, all those properties will actually just be created in that way and inherited from the um, from the parent um, or the super class. So that's that one. So I've got, and now what's the other thing I wanted to do? If I come back to here, I'll see all friends need to have a new hug reaction because our default hug reaction that we inherited is this one, which is just as does not want to hug you, but your friends want to hug you. So let's say um, did a hug. And again, we need to pass self because this is the object that we're actually hugging here. Self, and I say the friend responds uh, to a hug. Okay, and I'm just gonna say print and use an F string, a formatting string in here, so I can put in the character's name or the friend's name. Um, and just say that whoever the friend is hugs you back. Running out that and close my invert commas off. So now I've made as the, the friend character. Let's go back and look at our UML, our Universal Modern Language Diagram. And we can say I've got friend. I didn't have to add any new attributes or characteristics into it. And I did add the new method of hug. Rightio. So um, I'm going to, don't worry about the change in the characters yet. Um, I'm going to, all right, let's do it. I'm going to save this and I'm going to come across to main and instead of Nigel, so I'm just going to import from character import character, um, comma friend. From character import character, comma friend. So now I've imported friend, I can actually now define Nigel. Instead of being a character, he's going to be a um, a friend. Radio. so that's the only change I need to make with that. So now if I come into here, hopefully, let's see, let's run it. And if I go to Nigel's room, which is south and then East and here I am and Nigel is here and if I say hug it should say Nigel hugs you back okay so we we've, we've done that we've got that through there we've got our friend in our character the next one we need to do is our enemy so oh she should come out and go quit out of there radio so let's say another class which is going to be enemy um, so the same thing, I, you need to give it a name. I need to say what the parent class is, what the super class is, and that's character. Radio. So I've got that information in there, perfect. Now, um, again, I need to initialize the enemy object. Um, and when I create the enemy object, I need to get the his name. And then I say, right, I'm just going to initialize the enemy object by calling the character initialize. So calling the initialization of the character class. So how I do that, because the character class is the super class of this. Um, So he's been, I've called that, I've actually passed on the name that's been passed into there. And so now I should have all the attributes that were up here. So it now has name, it has description, it has conversation. But if we go back and look at our UML, it wants us to add in a new attribute, a new property, which is the weakness. So, and it's gonna be a string. So I need to come into here and I need to add under that, I need to say self. So whatever this um, character is, this friend is, the self has a weakness. And at first, the weakness is none until we define it later on. So I have now defined my enemy character. Um, I then going to have a fight, radio. So the whole idea of this little game is that you need to be able to um, so go back to the UML, and you'll see that the, I need to add in the fight 
value which changes from here. Also notice I'm putting an item in here, radio, an item in here in, in that function. It needs to reflect it for both of them to be consistent. So I need to come back up to the character and I'm going to change fight to also have a value or an item. That'll do. Radio, so that's in there. We don't use it for this one, but I just need it to be the same and reflect the same as the um, the same arguments as the um, other fight um, method. So self and then item. So item is going to be what you are fighting them with, and um, the comment is it's just going to. Uh, fights the enemy with provided item and returns if the player survives. So basically, if the player chooses to fight with the right item, i.e. whatever the weakness is, self weakness, the weakness of the enemy, whatever it is, then you say, um, then you have won because you strike down whoever the enemy is with the item that you have suggested to use. Okay, cool. Um, else, um, you don't, and they beat you. So, self name crushes you, puny adventurer. All right, and then, oh, and then we're gonna say whether or not you actually survived. So we need to return that value back to the main pro program true so return true or because true the player um, survived false is that the player did not survive so let's see we got true and we got false there okay so let's going to save this so character can come back to main and I'm going to change character to enemy because we no longer have a character in here we either have friends or enemies so enemy and then I come down here and I need to change Eugene to enemy. Radio, Eugene, huge troll, etc. Information is all there. So I'm just going to run this and see if I have it in a typo. That's fine. That's going south and Eugene's here. So that's right. So the, even though he's, a, he's an enemy now, it still says the same stuff. Right. So now we need to change the fight function. Okay, so I'm going to stop this, quit. Let's go back and check here. So I've defined the child class friend and we change the character type. So I've changed the actual character type to both Eugene and Nigel. And now I need to adjust the fight command. So let's adjust the fight command. So the fight command is in here, fight. Now again, if the current room character is none, radio, then you need to say what the fight response is. Now remember, this has changed because we now got to put in an item of what they're actually going to fight. But we need to know what that item is. So, let's see, if the current room, so if there's someone in the current room, we need to say, uh, find out what the weapon is that they use. Weapon equals input. What will you fight with? and then put our little prompt mark out there. Make sure that we convert it to lower. So it's all lower case, there's no problem there. And then we then say if, so, so we're gonna say is if current room, so whatever character is in the current room, Current room character, radio. If current room character fight weapon, radio. If that happens, so what this test will be if we fight the character and it's with the weapon that is their weakness, then going back to character, you will win and it will return true. So, therefore, if the current room character fight returns true, i.e. the weapon is their weakness, then you've beaten them. So you then need to get rid of the character in the room because you have beaten them. 
Um, yep. Um, else. And what we're going to do else, um, if that's on this else here, and I get rid of that current ring fight. So then this else, so if there, there's an else in here. So if you fight them and you win, the current room character is none. Else, if they win, you're dead, and therefore the game is over. So we say running equals false. Because remember, running is a Boolean variable that we check up here with the main loop each time we pass through. So running equals false. So the only last thing we need to do is that we need to also give Nigel a weakness. Radio, or oh, sorry, Eugene, a weakness, because otherwise you won't be able to fight with them. Um, weakness equals, and his weakness is cheese, especially if it's smelly. Radio, so let's save that, give that a run, and see what happens. You're the big run. The room's so big, the light from your torch doesn't really. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's go south, and then we suddenly have Eugene. Eugene is here. Radio is a troll, etc. So I am going to fight Eugene. What will you fight with? I'm going to fight with cheese. That's right. You strike Eugene down with cheese. Now notice this. You strike Eugene down with cheese, and then it describes a room again, and it doesn't say Eugene. That's because up here, when you won the fight, when this returns true, we get rid of whatever characters in the room. So what happens if I go quit and check the try the other option? So if I instead try to fight him with something else. Right are you uh, south um, fight Eugene. What are you gonna fight with? I'm gonna fight with the dog. Oh, Eugene crushes you, puny adventurer, and because this is returned false, so that message is in here. Eugene crushes you, puny adventurer, in the character file, in the character file script so because that camera and that returns false then running becomes false which means you exit out of the game so what have we done have we done what we needed to do but just to the fight command yes and we have and we've changed the character types and we now have got our two child characters with that awesome so let's see what is your task you need to do you need to make an your additional character into either an enemy or friend so maybe you made your additional room and you've also made your additional character your spare character so you need to decide whether that character is an enemy or whether that character is a friend and also then make the adjustments to how they respond to fights or hugs etc so there you go that's the end of our stage four of the darkest dungeon